Wow, the DLSS power of Nintendo Switch 2 is even better than we thought. Hello everyone, this is Andres Restart, and today we are going to be getting into the advantages of NVIDIA's deep learning super sampling technology, DLSS, on Switch 2. We recently got some new footage of Cyberpunk on Switch 2 that is showing off some very impressive things for the console, and it's speaking volumes for what DLSS can offer, and so it's very exciting to think about what we may see down the road on Switch 2. However, there's been a lot of confusion and misunderstanding about what's going on surrounding DLSS on Switch 2. What is DLSS? How does it work? Are we seeing it in different games? What sort of advantages is it offering? And so today I want to go over this new footage, break down what DLSS does, and talk about how this is actually a really big deal, and it might just be even better than what we thought. But before going forward, let me take this moment to point out, I am aiming to reach 50,000 subscribers by the time the Switch 2 launches on June 5th. So if you find yourself enjoying my content, your subscription would be appreciated. So there has been much confusion surrounding the Switch 2 on many different fronts, especially having to do with the overall visual fidelity and performance of the console. Specs have been coming out, specs have been confirmed apparently, not by Nintendo, but by other sources saying it's officially from Nintendo behind the scenes. Point is, we pretty much know what the official specs are for the Nintendo Switch 2, and a lot of people have been looking at those numbers and plugging them in to a mobile laptop PC and trying to see how powerful the Switch 2 is. Of course, the Switch 2 is custom, so you can't quite get a full proper understanding of what the Switch 2 is actually capable of. So there's a little bit of confusion there. But then on top of that, from what we've seen of the different games on Switch 2 so far, there has also been confusion. At first, there were experts saying that DLSS had not been observed or there wasn't any certainty of DLSS having been observed in different Switch 2 games, but since that has been debunked and it has been confirmed that we are actually seeing DLSS being used in a few different Switch 2 games, including Cyberpunk. But then we also have situations like with Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. This game, to me, is so exciting and impressive, and I was absolutely thrilled to hear that on Switch 2, they have improved textures, high dynamic range, and in docked mode, the game can run at a 4K resolution at 60fps, or at a 1080p resolution at 120fps. And so the fact that the Switch 2 can run games at 120 frames per second, and they can run games at 4K60, this says a lot about what the Switch 2 is capable of. But a lot of people have tried to counter this by saying, oh, it's just upscaling, it's not truly 4K, so it's not really a big deal, it's not that impressive. And I assume that for games like Metroid Prime 4, the reason they are able to get the Switch 2 to run that game at a 4K60 is because of DLSS. So then, what is DLSS exactly? This is more than just a basic upscaling, and I want to try and explain the difference here, at least in layman terms from what I can understand. On NVIDIA's DLSS site, this is how they define DLSS. NVIDIA DLSS is a suite of neural rendering technologies powered by GeForce RTX tensor cores that boosts frame rates while delivering crisp, high-quality images that rival native resolution. And that's all that's relevant for this particular discussion here. The main point I wanted to bring up is the fact that NVIDIA says that these high quality images rival native resolution. So when we're talking about Metroid Prime 4 Beyond running at a 4K resolution at 60 frames per second, likely thanks to DLSS Super Resolution, what that means is that Retro Studios, the developer of Nintendo, the developer behind Metroid Prime 4, is using this technology to run Prime 4 at a lower resolution. It uses AI upscaling to improve that resolution, and it essentially rivals what would be a native resolution of 4K. And to be clear, I am not saying that DLSS AI upscaling is better than a native resolution. And video does not use that wording, they say rival. However, it comes really close and in some cases it can be arguably better. There are many cases where you can run a game at a native resolution with TAA, temporal anti-aliasing, where they 
rely on prior frames to improve the current frames so you can have less shimmering or jaggy issues to improve the overall image quality. But with DLSS, you can find image quality that's very close to what you might see in terms of resolution while also doing a better job of getting rid of jaggies and shimmering. But something else that should be understood here is that what we have observed with DLSS is that it tends to work better when we're working with higher resolutions. So if you're upscaling from 1080p to 4K, for example, because there's a larger sample of higher quality detail, you can get an overall better image. But when you're using DLSS at a lower resolution and using that to upscale the game to 1080p, more issues can be observed. And then in those cases, native with TAA tends to more frequently be the overall better visual experience. However, if the game can't run well on the Switch 2, then using DLSS to get to 1080p might be the best middle ground compromise here. Of course, I'm also saying that without fully understanding all of the different benefits of the custom hardware Switch 2, they may have designed around some of these potential challenges that I don't know. It is probably safe to assume though that Switch 2 will not be using what would be the best of both worlds, which is a DLAA, Deep Learning Anti-Aliasing, where it takes the native image and improves it with Deep Learning AA, which is better than TAA. But the main takeaway I'm trying to get at here is that those who are arguing that DLSS is like a basic upscale, that it's not really anything comparable to a native resolution, that is extremely unfair. And it is something that rivals it. And in some cases, when we're talking about the higher resolutions, it's actually better. So when we're talking about Metroid Prime 4 running at 4K60, it essentially is running at 4K60. And so that is impressive. It does mean that, yes, we can see different Switch 2 games running at 4K60, unlike prior gen consoles. So this whole argument that the Switch 2 is only a little bit better than PS4, when PS4 can't do 4K, when PS4 can't do 120 frames per second, I think is, well, not really a fair argument to make. And I'll also note that the advantages of DLSS go beyond just improving the resolution and anti-aliasing, but also, yes, Nvidia themselves has confirmed that Switch 2 will be capable of having ray tracing as well. That simulation of real-world lighting effects can look pretty awesome. How often will we see it on Switch 2? To what effect will it be used? That part, I'm not sure on. I don't think we've seen too much evidence of it quite yet. But let's now move on to talking about this latest footage of Cyberpunk. So we've been getting a few different new clips and bits of footage of Cyberpunk on Switch 2. And what I think should be noted here is that the initial footage we got is not going to be the final version of the game, and perhaps the footage we just recently got still won't be the final footage of the game, but as more and more footage comes out, the more impressive it appears to be. So a fellow content creator, Blunty, took some of this recent footage and did a comparison using the apparent specs of Switch 2 running on a PC versus what we're actually seeing of Switch 2 footage here. And as you can see, the actual Switch 2 version looks better. It looks like the advantages of DLSS in terms of anti-aliasing, getting rid of those jaggies and upholding a higher resolution, they're pretty good. And it goes to show what DLSS can offer here. And this overall comparison also speaks to the idea of not just looking at the specs and seeing how that would work on a PC versus how they would work in their custom form on the Switch 2. It's going to be different, and over time, developers are going to continue to find more ways to push the console, as it works for all pieces of hardware throughout the history of video games. And I'll just mention this part here because I think it's also quite clear. We've seen comparisons of Street Fighter versus the Xbox Series S and Switch 2 versions, and from the comparison shots, we can see that Switch 2 in some cases does look better. I'm not saying across the board, the Switch 2 isn't across the board more powerful than a Series S, but there will be some scenarios where Switch 2 will hold up rather well, and sometimes look a little better. But since that comparison from Blunty, we have gotten even more footage of Cyberpunk, and it just looks awesome. This Switch 2 version of Cyberpunk is really shaping up to be something very impressive for the console. It's showcasing what can be done on this hardware? Let's remind ourselves that this is a port. 
It's probably a fantastic port job as we are continually seeing, but it's not a game that was developed initially with the Switch 2 in mind. Imagine what we'll be able to see down the road on Switch 2 as developers continue to acquaint themselves with the hardware and start to build games ground up for Switch 2. If we can see games like Cyberpunk looking and running this well on the console, which already looks pretty good, that gets me excited for the future. And yes, it does suggest that the Switch 2 can competently run some pre-demanding games. It may require a competent investment from a developer to do so, and in some cases that may not be realistic depending on the situation and resources and all, but it can happen. The Switch 2 is capable of impressive modern games, which I think says a lot given that it is hybrid hardware. This is a mobile device. You know, what's interesting is that I look at games like Final Fantasy VII and Cyberpunk and Hogwarts Legacy, and I can understand how some people might look at those games and think that they look more impressive than some of Nintendo's current offerings like Mario Kart World or Donkey Kong Bonanza. But I will say here, I don't think those are fair comparisons because we're talking about very different styles here. From what we are seeing of Mario Kart World, I actually think it's really impressive once you put it into perspective. The world is pretty dynamic, a lot is going on within this vast environment, and there's a lot of characters on screen doing a variety of different things at a high fidelity at 60 frames per second, and you can still do this in split screen, at least with two players still running at 60 frames per second, and so I think that actually is fairly impressive. And you look at something like Donkey Kong Bonanza, which is at a pretty high resolution, also at 60 frames per second, and yes, I understand that the 3D map has some frame rate issues, and we haven't heard about the game running extremely well from a performance perspective, but there is a lot going on. There is so much destruction going on, most of the environment can be destroyed, and for a game to have that much level of destruction, so much that you can manipulate to the environment with this level of fidelity, this isn't Minecraft we're talking about here, it's not something that would even be close to possible on Switch 1, and, and also we probably haven't seen the final version of Bonanza. Hopefully, performance improves by the time it comes out in July. And to close, I simply want to stress here that when we're talking about how impressive Switch 2 is, this is with the perspective that it is mobile hardware, that it's a hybrid device. Of course, it's not as powerful as an Xbox Series X, or a PlayStation 5, or even more obviously, a dedicated gaming PC that's significantly more expensive. The Switch 2 is proving to be special because it's offering us experiences that are available on more powerful hardware that still hold up favorably. That's pretty special, in my opinion, but what do you all think? Let me know in the comments below. This is Andres Restart, thank you so much for listening and watching, and I'll see you all really soon. Take care. Bye.